Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to take a brief detour to the magical land of proteins. In today's society, the word protein is thrown around constantly, especially when it comes to food and dieting. But we're not going to talk about proteins in that context, but rather its molecular architecture. This will be a short lesson, just a basic introduction. I feel I need to touch upon proteins a bit before I talk about DNA organization, replication, transcription, all that good stuff. Else, those lessons might be kind of confusing. So, let's get started. First of all, proteins belong to what we call the four macromolecules of life. So, what are they? Well, one of them we have is uh, nucleic acids. Nucleic acids, and these are um, DNA and RNA. We also have carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. We also have lipids. Lipids. And then finally, we have proteins. Okay, I know we haven't talked about RNA yet, or carbohydrates, or lipids, and we've only just started on DNA. Um, but don't worry, we will get to them in due time. The point I'm trying to make is that proteins are extremely important because they are important for many, many, many aspects of life. They are molecules that maintain the delicate balance of life. For example, hemoglobin, okay? Hemoglobin is a protein found in your red blood cells and it's important for transporting oxy oxygen throughout your body. Uh, another protein, DNA polymerase, polymerase is responsible for uh, creating new copies of DNA during cell division. Even your hair, your hair is made out of keratin, which is another protein that is a very fibrous and resili resilient type. And just like DNA, proteins are made, of, made out of building blocks. In this case, they are amino acids. Here, we see the generic structure of an amino acid. It has an amino group at one end, which is over here. I'll circle it for you. This is called the amino group. And then in the other end, we have a carboxyl group, which is over here. So, carboxyl group. Okay, the middle part has a R group right here. And this is where amino acid diversity lies. You see, there are 20 amino acids, and each one is defined by its unique side chain. So this R right now is just acting as a variable for one of the 20 side chains. This is showing all 20 amino acids with their side chains highlighted. And as you can see, the backbone for each amino acid is the same. We have an amino group in one end and a carboxyl group at the other end. And like I said, because the side chain is what defines the amino acid, um, we can group these amino acids based on their uh, side chain properties. So some amino acids are considered non-polar because their side chains are very neutral. Some amino acids are considered polar because their side chains contain electronegative elements such as oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen. And some um, uh, amino acids are considered electrically charged because, well, they have a charge. The amino acids that carry a negative charge are called acidic. And amino acids that, that carry a positive charge in their side chains are called basic amino acids. And take note, some of these amino acids have these, uh, these rings, these carbon rings basically in their, um, in their side chains. And yeah, so that's very interesting as well. So all of this, we've put all of this together all of these um, traits that these uh, amino acids have are extremely relevant and significant. But we'll talk about that much later on. For now, just know that amino acids are very diverse. 
And so this is how amino acids are connected to one another, forming a polypeptide chain. Let me write that down. Polypeptide chain. And similar to DNA, it has directionality. At the amino end, the amino group end, we call, um, we call this the N terminus. And at the carboxyl end, we call it the C terminus. Oh, wow, I just realized something. This is actually missing an oxygen. I'll just let me put that in there. Oxygen, and this will be uh, negatively charged. Okay, um, so N terminus and C terminus. The side chains are, again, highlighted just for clarity. So all of these are the side chains. And uh, the bonds that are connecting each amino acids to one another, which would be, this would be one here, another one would be here, um, another one would be here. So these bonds are called um, peptide bonds. I'll write that down in a second. And another one here. Okay, so these bonds are called peptide bonds which are responsible for linking one amino acid with another one. So why did I call this, what we see here, a polypeptide chain? If I said proteins were, were made out of amino acids, why didn't I call this a protein? Well, a protein is usually much longer than what's shown here. And more, and, uh, and most importantly, their structure and function. I'll show you what I mean. This is a ribbon diagram of a bacterial protein. Specifically, this is called a DNA primase. Okay, and a DNA primase is involved in DNA replication. Now, what do I mean by structure? Well, in essence, this is a polypeptide chain. But you can see there's all these uh, loops and turns. Like we have these helical structures all over the place. We have these kind of flattened sheets in this polypeptide chain as well. And also these, these, these twists and turns and all these other geometric properties. So in essence, a protein is a long polypeptide that's highly structured and has a function. In this case, it's a DNA primase. The last thing I'm going to touch upon is some terminology. So the specific amino acid sequence, shown here just the three letter abbreviations of a protein, is called the primary structure. And the secondary structure refers to the twists and turns within the protein caused by the uh, amino acids. So this will be the uh, secondary structure and shown here specifically is an alpha helix which we will talk about much later on. The tertiary structure is referring to the overall conformation of the protein and lastly if the protein is part of a larger protein complex we call it the quaternary structure. And so that brings us to the end. So what have we learned today? In summary, we learned that proteins are essential for life and that they're made of amino acids, which there are a total of 20 with unique side chains. And these amino acids are linked together by peptide bonds. And once they're linked together, then they form polypeptide chains. And basically, these are what proteins are. Proteins are essentially long polypeptide chains with structure and function. And we also cover some terminology from the uh, primary structure, which is just the uh, amino acid sequence in a protein. The secondary structure, which is the twists and turns and the geometries in the protein. The T 
tertiary structure, which is the overall conformation of the protein. And then lastly, the quaternary structure, which is um, if the protein is a part of uh, a larger protein complex. That's what's referred to. Okay, and that pretty much wraps up our brief detour into the world of proteins. Next week, we're going to go back to DNA and start talking about DNA organization. And hopefully, this lesson will make the next lesson uh, less confusing and make a lot more sense. Well, and that's it for me today. Until next time, everyone, see you later.